So let me just start with my story. So I tore my knee joint meniscus cartilage playing soccer in college. Then I went on to tear my ACL, the ligament in my knee, and then developed an arthritic knee. And I'm sure that many of you in this audience have that same story. And by the way, I married a woman who has exactly the same story. And so this motivated me to become an orthopedic surgeon and to see if I couldn't focus on solutions for those problems that would keep me playing sports and not limit me. So with that, let me just show you a quick video to get you in the mood of what we're trying to explain. We are all aware of the risk of cancer, but there's another disease that's destined to affect even more of us, arthritis. Cancer may kill you, but when you look at the numbers, arthritis ruins more lives. Assuming you live a long life, there's a 50% chance you'll develop arthritis. And it's not just aging that causes arthritis. Common injuries can lead to decades of pain until our joints quite literally grind to a halt. Desperate for a solution, we've turned to engineering to design artificial components to replace our worn-out body parts. But in the midst of the modern buzz around the promises of a bionic body, shouldn't we stop and ask if there's a better, more natural way? Let's consider an alternative path. What if all the replacements our bodies need already exist in nature, or within our own stem cells? This is the field of biologic replacements, where we replace worn out parts with new natural ones. And so the mission is, how do I treat these things biologically? And let's talk about both what I did for my wife and what I've done for hundreds of other patients. The first thing for my wife, and the most common thing I hear from my patients, particularly in the 40 to 80 year old age group or 70 year old age group, is that come in and say, hey doc, isn't there just a shock absorber you can put in my knee? I'm not ready for a joint replacement. And so for her, I put in a human meniscus allograft, a donor, right into that joint space, and that replaces that. And then for the unstable ligament, we put in a human donor ligament to stabilize the knee. And then for the damaged arthritis on the surface, we do a stem cell paste graft, which we designed in 1991, to regrow that articular cartilage surface and give it back a smooth surface there. So here's my wife's bad knee on the left and her just hiking now four months later in Aspen and doing well. And it works not just for my wife, but certainly for other patients. The girl on the video, Jen Hudak, just won the super pipe in Aspen uh, just nine months after having destroyed her knee, as you see in the other image, and having a paste graft to that knee. And so we can regrow these surfaces biologically. So with all this success, why isn't that good enough, you might ask? Well, the reason is because there's not enough donor cycles. There's not enough young, healthy people falling off their motorcycle and <laughs> donating that tissue to us. And the tissue's very expensive. And so that's not gonna be a solution for, that's gonna get us global with biologic tissue. But the solution is animal tissue, because it's plentiful, it's cheap, you can get it from young, healthy tissues, but the barrier is immunology. And the specific barrier is a specific epitope called the galactoseal or gal epitope. So if we're going to transplant animal tissues to people, we have to figure out a way to get rid of that epitope. So my story in working with animal tissues starts in 1984. And I started first with cow Achilles tendon, where we would take the cow Achilles tendon, which is type 1 collagen, strip it of its antigens by degrading it with an acid and detergent wash, and forming it into a regeneration template. We would then take that regeneration template and insert it into the missing meniscus cartilage to regrow that in a patient's knee. We've now done that procedure and it's been done worldwide in over 4,000 cases. So it's an FDA approved and worldwide accepted way to regrow the meniscus. And that's great when I can degrade the tissue, but what happens for your ligament when I need an intact ligament? I can't grind it up in a blender. So in that case, I have to design, and we designed with Uri Galili and Tom Turk, an enzyme wash to wash away or strip those galactoseal epitopes with a specific enzyme. And we call that a gal stripping technique. What we do is humanize the tissue. And so by gal stripping that tissue, we humanize it, and then we can put it back <laughs> into a patient's knee. 
And we've done that now. We've taken pig ligament, young, healthy, big tissue, put it into 10 patients in an FDA-approved trial. And then one of our patients went on to have three Canadian Masters Downhill Championships on his pig leg, as he calls it. So we know it can work. And there's a wide clinical trial of this tissue now pending. So what about the next step? What about getting to a total biologic knee replacement, not just the parts? How are we going to revolutionize artificial joint replacement? Well, here's how we're going to do it. So what we're going to do is take an articular cartilage from a young, healthy pig, strip it of its antigens, load it with your stem cells, then put it back onto that arthritic surface in your knee, tack it on there, have you heal that surface, and then create a new biologic surface for your knee. So that's our biologic approach right now. We're going to rebuild your knee with the parts. We're going to resurface it with a completely new surface. But we have other advantages from the animal kingdom. There's a benefit of 400 million years of ambulation. We can harness those benefits. We can use thicker, younger, better tissues than you might have injured in your knee or than you might have when you're 40, 50, or 60. We can do it as an outpatient procedure. We can strip that tissue very economically. And so this is how we can get biologic knee replacement to go global. And so welcome to Super Biologics. It's not hardware. It's not software. It's bioware. It's version 2.0 of you. And so with that, coming to, an <laughs> coming to an operating theater near you soon, I believe. Thank you very much. The precision of a watch is a function of its movement. For Rolex and for Hans Wilsdorf, to guarantee the precision of a timepiece, the pressing question was how to protect the movement itself from the elements, not only water, but also tiny particles of dust. In 1926, a major step was taken with the creation of the world's first waterproof and dustproof wristwatch. The Rolex Oyster was born. Over the years, subtle changes in the design continue to improve the Oyster, adding more comfort while keeping the style contemporary. And along with style, more functions have been added. A Rolex wristwatch was the first to show the date through a small aperture on the face. It was also the first wristwatch to spell out the day of the week in full. In the early 1950s, Rolex developed professional watches whose functions went far beyond telling the time. Launched in 1953, the Submariner was the first Rolex watch guaranteed waterproof to a depth of 330 feet. Already on an incredible journey of innovation and design, Rolex decided to push the boundaries even further. In 1960, the Bathyscaphe Trieste and Rolex made history. The submersible successfully dived to 35,800 feet below the surface of the ocean. A Rolex deep sea special was strapped to the outside. The development of undersea exploration led to the launching in 1967 of the Sea Dweller 2000, waterproof to a depth of 2,000 feet. In 2008, the Submariner in gold is redesigned and the case features a new unidirectional rotatable bezel with a serochrome disc. Fitted with the patented Rolex ring lock system, the Rolex Deep Sea safely descends to 12,800 feet. has incorporated countless hours and more than a century of experience, years of research, innovation, and development into every one of its models. And the benefits arising from this work, including waterproofness, precision, and durability, are the result of Rolex's continuous pursuit of perfection. From the most elegant and prestigious models to the professional timepieces, all are exquisitely crafted. P. 
piece by piece, we design and manufacture every single watch. And the story continues.